Welcome back. If it has joined us, you're watching the news at 10 live on Channel Television Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Senate orders Edo State Governor Godwin Obasaki to issue no new proclamation to constitute state assembly, but the state governor insists the senator's action is illegal. President Mamadou Buhari opens defense in PDP's suit challenging his victory at the February presidential election, tenders 19 documents to three witnesses before election petitions tribunal. Senate confirms all 43 ministerial nominees listed for President Mamadou Buhari's cabinet after five days of screening. And police fire pepper spray to disperse protesters outside police station in Hong Kong. For more on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com. YouTube.com slash channels web has videos of our shows. We have a lot of pictures and stories coming in on our eyewitness portal. Let's begin uh, to look at some of the pictures that you sent in, as well as the stories attached to them. First are these pictures showing students of Delta State Polytechnic, Ozoro, on the streets protesting against bad results. Our eyewitness reporter who says there was mass failure after both OND and HND students sat for their first semester examinations, is pleading with concerned parties to intervene. The next picture is another protest, this time in the Ekpe area of Lagos. According to our eyewitness reporter, residents in the area are not happy about the bad state of roads, which they say is making life difficult for them. They want it fixed immediately. Our evidence reporter sent in this picture of an accident in Ibadan, the Oyo state capital, where a cab driver and a motorcycle rider collided. According to him, road users must pay more attention to avoid loss of lives and property. Thank you for sending in these stories and please keep them coming. Also remember to indicate where those stories are coming from. President Mamadou Buhari believes the current ethno-religious tension in the country would have been prevented if the acclaimed winner of the June 12 presidential election, Moshoud Abiola, had been allowed to rule. He mentioned this today while receiving elders and leaders of thought from Ogun State, led by the state governor, Dakbo Abiodun, who paid him a visit at the state house. The president described the late MQ Abiola as a bridge builder who used his resources for Nigerians and was accepted by all. Our correspondent, Gloria Omezoke, brings us a recap of the president's activities for the day. President Mohamed Buhari received elders and leaders of thought from Ogun State, led by Governor Dapo Abiodun. The group commended the president on his recognition of June 12 and his anti-corruption crusade while making a presentation of a local drum called Infusion. The president bemoaned the death of the acclaimed winner of June 12, late Moshuda Abiola. If uh, Abiola has survived and uh, became the leader of this country, the religious and the tribal politics of Nigeria wouldn't have been as strong as it eventually became would have gone over our worst problem in this country. Earlier in the day, the president declined to make any comment on who might likely succeed him at the end of his tenure in 2023, as he responded to proposals submitted by members of the progressives in academics who paid him a visit at the State House. I think if I identified anybody, I would give, uh, create more problem for him or for her. So I would rather keep my mouth shut and uh, let those who wanted to be president try as much as I did. I think you have a lot more to do, you as intellectuals, and uh, uh, to make sure that uh, you correctly document Nigerian political development. It's very important for the next generation. The president further addressed the issue of Almajiri's system, accusing state governments. The people uh, are deliberately criticizing 
the government. When I say the government, of course they mean the federal government for the Almajris. But that is the responsibility of state governments, which means the state governments are not doing their jobs. President Mohamed Buhari also reminded the academics that one trillion naira has been injected so far into the education sector in the last four years as reviving education remains priority for his second tenure. From the presidential villa, Gloria Umezuki, Channels Television News. Back to the lawmakers, the Senate has constituted its standing committees just before embarking on its annual recess. The announcement was made by the President of the Senate after the confirmation of ministers. A total of 69 committees and their leadership were named, some of which include Adiola Olamileko for finance, Barao Jubrin for appropriation, and Dinomelaye for aviation. Former governors Ibikuli Amosung and Rocha Sokorocha are in charge of capital markets and culture and tourism, while former Deputy Senate President Ike Kweremadu is in charge of the Environment Committee. The federal government today officially declared that the Islamic movement in Nigeria, led by Ibrahim El Zagzaki, has been proscribed and is classified a terrorist group. Inspector General of Police Muhammad Adamu made the declaration at his monthly conference with senior police officers at the force headquarters in Abuja, which is aimed at evaluating the internal security profile of the country. The police chief says by this proclamation, all protests by the IMN are banned. And any person engaged in any manner that could advance the activities of the group shall be treated as a terrorist and an enemy of state. Let me affirm that in relation to the Islamic movement in Nigeria, in view of their increasing engagement of terror tactics and other violent and subversive activities which contravene the Terrorism Prevention Act of 2013 as amended and vied the judicial pronouncement of the Federal High Court Abuja on the 26th of July 2019. The federal government has classified them as a terrorist group and has accordingly proscribed the El Zazaki led Islamic movement in Nigeria. In consequence, henceforth, any person engaged or associating in any manner that could advance the activities of the proscribed Islamic movement in Nigeria shall be treated as a terrorist, enemy of state, and a subversive element and shall be brought to justice within the context of the Terrorism <coughs> Act. The impact of this is that all forms of procession or protest by Islamic movement in Nigeria is now illegal and thus banned. The police and other security agencies are fully committed to giving full effect to this judicial pronouncement in the interest of our internal security and national cohesion. The parents of late Precious Sawalabi, a youth call member with Channels Television, who was killed during the violent clash between the Islamic movement in Nigeria and the police are asking the federal government to give their son a national honor and apprehend his killers. They made this appeal during the visit of the chairman of Channels Media Group, Mr. John Momo, and other management staff of the organization to their home in Zaria, Kaduna State. This is where the Awolabis live, and these are his siblings. The chairman of Channels Media Group, Mr. John Momo, leads a delegation to the Awolabis to commiserate with them over the loss of their son. Late precious Awolabi observed his compulsory national youth service with Channels Television. That was before he was shot dead during a clash between the Islamic movement in Nigeria and the Nigeria police. Nobody wants to lose a loved one, but, but you know, Sometimes God has greater things. He, know, he only knows why this has happened. And he's going to solve it for us. Yes, amen. Thank you. But we'll continue to seek him. We'll continue to pray. You know. 
by his grace we shall overcome. The head of the family appreciates this visit and much more the kindness shown his son while he was at Channel's television. We want to appreciate you, the management of uh, Channel Television and the executive director, your chairman. I want to say a big thank you uh, for the visit and all the care while my son was with you. Thank you. On the list of the requests of Precious' family is publishing some of his plays. His partner or somebody approached us and I said, look, we'd rather just let the family be the ones. Um, between the two of them, they will be able to let us know what you want to do. If you want to complete that series, channels will, will be willing to take care of everything. Don't worry about, about that. And we'll grant uh, the, the needed support at all times. Our Father and our God, we ask for healing in our land. We ask for healing in this family. Father, Lord, do not let the death of this boy be in vain. Beyond this visit, Mr. John Momo is asking for improved security everywhere in the country so the death of precious Owolabi does not go in vain. And our thoughts and prayers continue to be with the family of the late precious Owolabi. In the meantime, wives of governors of all 36 states have thrown their weight behind the First Lady, Aisha Buhari, on the need to urgently take proactive steps which will decrease the level of violence against young women and children. Our London correspondent, Juliana Olaika, reports. A recent study commissioned by the United Nations Population Fund Nigeria found that over a quarter of women aged between 25 to 39 have experienced physical violence. This heightened publicity has led to a rise in activism to put an end to the abuse. The First Lady of Nigeria, Mrs. Aisha Bahari, has weighed in on the public outcry by asking for urgent measures to be taken to stem the increase of such cases. We have the tendency to keep quiet and brush things under the carpet and um, not talk about it in our culture, uh, not just um, abuse, but so many things. And uh, we, we are trying to be outspoken about this particular issue so that our children can have better lives. In some homes, violence against women is almost accepted as a fact of life. Do you think that women can speak out mm. when they are being abused for the fear of sending them back into their father's house? Do I know that it's a taboo that when you have left your father's house to marry, they are coming back again to say somebody has driven, driven, you are driven out from the home. If you don't address this and put a stop to the puppet for, for it, to stop the perpetrator from perpetrating this act, you know what trauma means? It lives with the children for life. Challenges and efforts to eliminate violence against women in Nigeria can also be legal. It is most undesirable. We know that uh, the laws in existence are such that uh, must, kept, must keep the courts very busy in attending to these um, cases. What I think is that there should be special provision made for them so that they can easily attend to these uh, matters. And by so doing, those indulging in these uh, improper practices will gradually recede. Eliminating all forms of abuse against women in Nigeria will take some time, but time is running out. Raising awareness and seeking political support is just the first step in keeping Nigerian women safe. Juliana Olayinka, Channels Television News. When the news of 10 returns, police fire pepper spray to disperse protesters outside a police station in Hong Kong. That and more from the international scene on Around the World in Five.